Hi everyone, welcome to Bikini Design Club. Today, before we watch the tutorial and before you see what we did for the Alice 2.0, uh, this is a, a, an updated version of Alice Bikini Bottom. It was, it, it is one of our best sellers, and I really improved the, de the design. So you can see the intro video. I will pop up a card here, so you will can you you will be able to see it very quickly. The intro video where I explain the differences and how the pattern works and the options you have to sew it. But on today's tutorial I want to let you know that I will add some timestamps on the pattern description here below uh, on, the, on the video, on the tutorial, so that you can navigate easily through the three methods that I'm going to show you today. And I'm going to show you the original methods with a reversible version. The only thing is that the reversible version I did today uh, is with center back seam on the front also on the back it's the one of the updates but i also added a seam on the front and i sewed it as a reversible and you have this uh, this uh, available uh, on the next images on the next uh, minutes and then i also did exactly the same but as a non-reversible pattern so i used the same pattern but i sewed it as a non-reversible using lining and uh, there is no, no seam visible on the top, on the waist area of your top, of your bikini bottom, but there is a top stitch uh, on the leg holes. In this version, I also, I kept the center seam on the front and of course on the back. But then I thought that probably you also want to see uh, this version, so non-reversible, but no stitch on the waistline but with no center front seam. So that's why I did these ones. Uh, this is actually a size 14, so it's a bit big for my, for my doll. They, they sit a little bit higher on the hip, so here they slide, but they are a little bit higher, like so. Um, and we have no seams visible on the top here, on the waist. We have a top stitch matching color on the leg hole. This is a non-reversible, so we have lining on the insides and we eliminated the center front seam. So it's another option you might want to try and I think that uh, with this tutorial it's very easy for you to follow any of the options you want. If you still want to do it completely non-reversible and without the center front seam, you can easily also watch the first tutorial for Alice and you will be able to have four different ways of doing them. So I hope you enjoy it. Okay, bye, see you soon. Hello and welcome to Bikini Design Club. So we are updating our bottoms from last year uh, as some of you may know, I started sewing and drawing patterns one year ago and I think that uh, many of my first patterns deserve to be updated because I've learned a lot in the last year and I really think I can improve them and make them better. So today I'm going to start with the Alice bottom. It's one of your favorites. It, it was one of our best sellers and this is the original pattern and I have here a size small. This is the front and this is the back. And this is Alice 2.0. So Alice 2.0, the front uh, is similar to this one with a V-shape, but the, the here on the, on the edge of the strap, it's different. And also the back, we now have the center back seam. Uh, here it was a fold and now we have our center back seam curved for better fit. But it's still, it's different, the size looks different, I know, but you will see that it will fit much better than before. And today I want to show you two different ways of sewing Alice 2.0. So I'm going to show you the reversible methods in which I have already cut it, and this is not a mistake, okay, on the front I had a fold here before, and now there's no fold, I have a seam allowance. So I now have my main fabric, two of them cut it here, two of them from my lining, which is swimwear fabric because you want this to keep reversible. So I'm using two layers of swimwear fabric. And then for the back, again, the same two back, two because we have the center back seam here and two of our second fabric, okay? And this is the version where I'm gonna show you how to do it as a reversible and in the end you will see the difference between this one 
and another one I want to sew also today using the same fabric so that you can compare the results. So this one is the reversible. We are going to it in a moment. And now I'm going to show you the non-reversible. So again, I cut it two fronts, but this time um, when I cut it the two fronts for my lining, I removed the seam allowance from the top, from here. Okay, this seam allowance. So if we compare the sizes, we will have no seam allowance on the lining here. And you will understand why uh, later when we are sewing it. And then for the back, that's the same. I cut it two uh, for the back and also two of the main fabric. The thing here is that just like on our front, I also removed the seam allowance on the waist area of my back. Okay, so this is the difference today. So now let's start sewing them uh, with two different methods and la let's um, discover the differences. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pin the center back seams. Oh, sorry. <laughs> of all my pieces. So center back seams and center back seams here. And I will do the same for my reversible Alice 2.0. So for now, center back seams for the non-reversible and center back seams for the reversible. Now coming to the front, I'm going to place right sides facing together of my main fabric and my second fabric. And it's very easy to mistake the position of this. So be sure if you need, you compare with your paper pattern piece. And since I want to apply my elastic on my main sides, and my main side is not the yellow, it's the other one, I'm just going to place it on my table like so. And for now, we are just going to pin the waist area on both sides. And as I told you, this is a completely different way. On the original pattern on Alice, pattern you don't have any seam allowance on the front on the middle front and on this version you will have a seam allowance you can also uh, remove the seam allowance from version 2.0 you can remove the front seam allowance and use exactly the same methods that we have shown you on the tutorial on Alice but on Alice 2.0 I want to have the seam allowance in the middle of the front and that's why I changed it, okay? But if you want, just remove and use this as a fold line, okay? So I'm going to sew here using applying elastic and the center back seams with no elastic for my reversible version and for my non-reversible version. Something else I can do is regarding my non-reversible front. So on my non-reversible, I'm going to sew the, the top seam. This time I'm going to apply the elastic uh, on my other side, just like we did before. So I'm pinning this the wrong side. I always like to pin with my side of the elastic facing up on my table. Yes, so I prefer to place my pins with the right side so that I don't do any mistake. And we are also going to attach the, the top seam with elastic applied on our main side fabric. Okay. And then I will be back here on the table and I will show you what to do next. So our sewn, uh, our, 
our reversible is here on the table and I'm gonna lay right sides facing together of my back. I am going to pin the waist area and also the leg holes and I'm going to sew applying elastic on the main side on the waist and both leg holes okay so for the back for the reversible that's quite simple this is not my favorite method because of the side seams connecting when we are going to sew four layers of fabric I I have another way of sewing this that I prefer but for this specific method that I'm using today I need to do this with this method of sewing over the four layers so my uh, back from the reversible version of Alice 2.0 so the leg holes and the center back seam for the front we have here the front is this is the waist with the elastic as I told you and this is the other side right so I'm gonna flip this to the right sides I'm gonna trim this just I don't like it and I am going to very carefully lay this one right sides facing together on the edge here I'm gonna pin to make it easier for me to align all the fabrics because I'm going to align four layers so it's easier for me to pin this this three and then put that on top and replace the pins okay and now I'm just going to lay this flat here and pin and we are going to sew over the four layers of fabric so I know we are going to have a center seam on the front but you will see that we will be able to do the v-shape much better than on Alice 1.0 so let's keep with me until the end and watch the final result on this one and then you decide if you want to do this option on the front or if you want to go with our other older version for the non-reversible option for the front we will do exactly the same so that's easy and I'm not gonna keep you up here looking at this video watching me doing exactly the same so I'm gonna do it and pin the front and for the back we are gonna do exactly the same that we did for the reversible so we are going to place right sides facing together and we will pin and apply the elastic on the side of our main fabric only on the waistline for now only on the waistline but we will do the rest a little bit later so one detail regarding this one regarding the front instead of doing already what we were doing before we are going to open this seam on our straight stitch machine and with our seam towards the lining sides we will do an under stitch here a zigzag stitch but this is called an under stitch from one edge to the other and we will do this on this side and then we will also do on the other one but for now do the under stitch and after the under stitch is done then we will insert here and pin so i went to my straight stitch machine and did the under stitch on one of the sides for my front for the non-reversible and you can see here the zigzag and it's done and you can already see when you place this on the right side and you flatten the seam you can already see why we cut it the seam allowance from the from the lining you see that it matches perfectly here this is why we cut it the seam allowance from our front and back on the on the waist area to be able to do this finish and do not have excess lining uh, mounting on on inside when this is ready so now that i have this side done and this side ready I'm going to insert the sides that it's already under stitched and I'm going to insert it just like we did before aligning and pinning 
over three layers and then repositioning that one and over the four layers and I will sew them together it's important for you to really flatten your seam here and make it match so that your center V shape is perfect and you will see how perfect it gets for this center seam uh, I'm going to do overlock okay it's the finish that I prefer I'm going to sew the four layers with my overlock something that I want to share is that if you feel that at least the beginning here on the V shape if you want to do a little bit of straight stitch to feel more secure um, regarding the four layers you can do it but don't do a straight stitch all along here because it will break and you don't want to hear uh, uh, threads breaking on your on your bikinis so if you want just a little bit you can do it but only there the rest I don't think we need to so so here so on the reversible on the same area the back on this one but for the reversible we uh, for the non reversible we will only do the waist and this is because once we do the waist we can also go ahead to the straight stitch machine and just like I did on the front we can flatten the seam and do a top stitch with the zigzag not top stitch sorry under stitch with the zigzag on the lining sides all around the waist and that's why it's easier not to sew the leg holes on the non reversible at this point so let's go and sew all these areas before I finish this I want to come back here to the table to tell you some some things that I do that may interest you to repeat or not so I, I want to share here I did a straight stitch I did a straight stitch here in the center and came back until here and back and this is because I really want to make the V on the top of my center seam from the front very secure so that's what I did it uh, that's why I did this and also because I want to trim the corner here and just a little bit here the elastic I want to cut the excess fabric on this edge here and since I have secured the threads from the overlock I feel secure enough to cut the excess because I know that this is not going to be ruined because when you reverse this to the right side you will see that the shape is much more accurate and much more perfect than uh, if I hadn't done this and this will be like so uh, for the back what I did was uh, I, I was coming with my overlock here and then I stopped I went out and I did a straight stitch on this edge here and now I'm going to cut my elastic vertically and I'm going to uh, start sewing again the elastic here so symmetric to this one and then I'm gonna zigzag here of course but this is just because I really want the v-shape to be uh, pronounced instead of going um, continuous I know that we are supposed to do this on a continuous way because the stretch of the elastic will go all around you and if we cut it here you will break that um, elasticity that uh, distribution of the tension uh, but nevertheless this time I did it like so but if you want of course you can go on um, you can go on instead of stopping as I did here and now I'm gonna with another elastic and I'm gonna do the rest here and then I will be back on the table and I did exactly the same for the non-reversible um, version so I'm gonna also trim a little bit here and this one something that I'm going to do already is I'm going to flatten the seam and I'm going to do the understitch of on this side which I haven't done before okay and then I'll be back on the table so uh, regarding the reversible I did a zigzag here on the v-shape and I have my back completely ready now to close the front leg holes of course we have a center seam so we cannot just reverse it and so as we are used to but this, this is very simple you want to combine this one with the other one so you combine them and you tuck the rest inside so this one will be rolled inside here 
and I will have my two fabrics that I want to sew together. Uh, I will place uh, pins and I will sew them together applying the elastic. I will do one side and then I will come back. I will unfold this again and do exactly the same process and I will sew the other leg. Okay, so that's quite simple, I think. To make sure you you make you move out of the way the the fabric that is inside there. Sometimes I place a pin just securing the fabric inside so I'm sure that it is not going to invade my sewing edge here and so sometimes it's easier for me to just place a pin here in the middle. Okay. And I'm going to do one leg and then I'm going to do the other one. For the non-reversible, I actually think I should, have, I should have done this better because on the back, as you can see, I, I've done this with a continuous elastic and then I have made the understitch as I told you I was going to here on this side, right? And as soon as we place this to the right side, you see that it is going to be perfect. And even the V-shape on the back is going to be very nice. And I don't like what I've done here on the front. So don't uh, do what I did here. For my front, I don't like how this turns out on one of the sides. I think I should have uh, made the understitch on one side and also on the other before connecting them. And so instead of doing one and then without the understitch connecting them on the center, do both under stitch and then we connect them on the center okay so that's something to improve next time i sew uh, the non-reversible uh, method that i'm using and now for the non-reversible uh i already have uh the front and the back uh ready here so i'm going to place right sides facing together and i'm going to sew the side seams. Don't forget to align your fabrics and your seams so that this looks nice once it's sewn. I will do uh, this stitching with my straight stitch machine um because i want to trim the excess fabric on the side seams so i'm going to use my straight stitch uh, machine to do this side connection as for my gusset i can also go ahead and sew it the fronts are already attached together and i pulled the fabric that's why it's slipping out there uh, so it was my mistake and now i aligned the back here I grab my uh, back and instead of placing on top of my back, I pull it under here and I will sew the four layers of fabric with the fabrics aligning like so. And this will make sure that my seam will be hidden and I can trim this. I will also use my straight stitch machine to uh, sew this. I will align it better and I will sew this area and uh, my side seams. And also this, so my back of the reversible is here and my front, as I told you, we did the sides. And now right sides facing together, I'm going to insert my front inside my back, aligning the sides and the crotch area. And once that is all aligned, so the four layers of fabric, I will pin and we will sew over the four layers. Make sure you flatten your seam when you meet them here on the sides and it is really, really aligned on the edge because if it's not, the connections between the two pieces are going to be very ugly. And that's why sometimes I don't like this method um, on the sides of connecting the four layers because if you are not able to tuck it in exactly perfect, I will not enjoy the results. 
but I know with practice uh, everything is possible so I just need to align them and so the four of them I'm going to use straight stitch and I'm going to come a little bit here on the overlock threads to secure them because I want to trim them in the end and my uh, reversible will be ready the only thing missing is opening a small hole on my second fabric lining and reversing it okay so this one is almost ready for the rever the non-reversible we have sewn the sides and we have sewn uh, the crotch area i wasn't very perfect today doing this maybe it's because it's saturday it's a very sunny day and we are on lockdown for two months now and i'm i confess today i'm a bit impatient I wanted to go to the beach and do some pedal, stand-up pedal, which I love, but I can't. So maybe that's why today things are not coming exactly as I want them. Well, relax. Uh, okay. And once we have this like so, we just need to sew our leg holes. And on the non-reversibles, to sew the leg holes, we reverse it to the wrong sides, like so. And we just place the seams together, which will match perfectly because we took the seam allowance, as you remember. I'm going to pin so that the fabric uh, stays where I want it because there was an area back there I didn't pin and so I stretched the fabric with unintentionally of course and then I ended up having one fabric bigger than the other and I really don't like it so I'm gonna pin and I'm gonna apply the elastic on the lining sides with my overlock and then I'm gonna fold and do a top stitch all around the two leg holes and this one will also be ready don't forget if you like these videos to subscribe our youtube channel but stay with us until the end because i always share in the end some pictures of the final results and i want you to be able to compare the two um, versions of alice 2.0 and to see which uh, sewing method you prefer and as i told you you can also uh, do this without the center seam on the front just remove the seam allowance from the uh, pattern alice 2.0 remove the center front seam allowance and you will have no seam on the center front okay. for our final version of the alice 2.0 and i i think this will be my favorite one we have no center front seam so that's why i uh, wanted you to see this option and we will place timestamps on the on the description on our tutorial so you can jump straight to which method you prefer because with the timestamps that's very easy to do and so i'm placing right sides facing together for my back for my lining i uh, for my main fabric and also for my lining and if you are wondering uh why am i doing this non-reversible you have the reversible I already showed you how to do the reversible so uh, I'm doing the non-reversible with my favorite sewing methods which will be I will hide the seam on the on the um, on the waist and I will not hide uh, the seams on the leg holes so that will be my uh, my goal today is to do that I am going to use a similar method to uh, one of the versions uh, you have just seen on this video but i'm gonna sew it uh, with a different way so if you want to watch this one it's again a different way what i'm doing here is i'm cutting seam allowance from the waist on the front lining and i will also cut the seam line the seam from the bottom on the waistline okay i know this may sound strange but that's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna cut the seam the best is not to cut like i'm doing because this is not completely straight the the line the best for you is to grab your fab your pattern 
uh, cut the seam allowance and use the pattern pieces to cut the lining instead of what I'm doing, okay? I did the lazy version. It will change a little bit, but it's just a little bit. And so today for this tutorial, I was a bit lazy, sorry. So now I'm gonna pin the center back seams for the main fabric and for the lining. And that's the first thing I'm going to do. Uh, so this on my uh, straight uh, overlock machine or serger uh, with no elastic just so the two center back seams okay center back seams are uh, sewn and uh, to make sure that the white uh, thread is not visible because I didn't change my overlock threads to red uh, what I did, I did a zigzag uh, after the um, serger. I did a zigzag with red, and that's why you will not see the white threads on these sides. I like perfect finishes. Well, now we are just going to connect the front with the back, right sides facing together. And for now, just connect the two sides here and do the same for your lining. Align right sides facing together and sew the sides. Our sides are ready, so let's sew them. You can sew them on your serger or if you prefer, if you prefer on your zigzag with your zigzag. Align right sides facing together on your waistline and pin the two fabrics together. Never mind that it looks like the lining is too small. This, remember, we uh, removed the seam allowance from the waistline of our lining. Well, that was on purpose, as you know, so never mind that, okay? Just trim the excess threads and serge this, applying the elastic on the side of your main fabric, okay? On the waistline, applying the elastic on the side of your main fabric. Once the elastic is applied, flatten the seam to the side of the lining and apply your uh, understitch with a zigzag. And that's what I will do now. So here is the understitch on the side of my lining and so when we now place our waist straight you will never see the lining on the other side and as you can see I'm glad we cut it the excess that we had from our um, lining otherwise we will now have an excess fabric here and as you can see we will not have excess fabric because our edges here will match perfectly and we have no excess fabric but I'm gonna show you on the table now we have pinned the lining to the main piece and we are going to our uh, serger and apply elastic on the side of the lining and then we will fold and we'll do a top stitch or a zigzag if you prefer and I know it may look like you have excess fabric here on the lining but you will see that once we apply the elastic and we fold you will see that you will not have any excess fabric and this will be um, very nice with a very nice finish so let's go to our serger and apply our elastic today for my uh, top stitch I will be using this kind of thread this is by Mettler uh, this is called Cetaflex this uh, thread is very interesting it has more stretch than the polyester threads 
and the colors that you have available are amazing i really love using this as a as a, um, a top stitch thread and you see you saw me using it on the coral red version when i f uh, filmed the tutorial if you want to see and i used one for the overlock one uh, for the cover stitch one um, metler uh, set of flex and one polyester and you can see the difference this is very thin very elastic and very nice finish once your swimsuit is ready. So today I'm gonna use this one in red. Our elastics are uh, sewed to our leg holes. So now we are finally going to finish Alice uh, 2.0 with our cover stitch, which I'm going to do a zigzag, as I told you, with my set of flex threads. So let's go ahead. Um. our uh, bikini bottom Alice 2.0 as you can see if I stretch this just a little bit there's no excess fabric of the lining here my top stitch had a black thread so you can see the zigzag here for the black that I used on my bobbin but on the right side you can see that I have used the dark red so you almost can see this the stitch that I've um, done here and on the waist area, we have no seam visible. The sides are just perfect, I think, <laughs> at least. So I'm very, very critical of my, of my work, but this time I'm very proud of the Alice 2.0 versions. So I hope you do too, and you really like them. And now this is it. Bye guys.